QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 presentation receive payment form. Get ready because we bookkeeping pros are moving up the hilltop with QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2022. Here we are in our QuickBooks sample file, sample rock castle construction, going through the setup process, selecting the view drop down, the open windows list, having the open windows on the left hand side. Then we're going to be opening up the home page, company drop down, home page in the middle area, maximizing the screen to the gray area reports drop down looking for the balance sheet company and financial going on down to that balance sheet standard report going to keep the dates range where it is at or the date where it's at then going to go to the reports drop down next financial statement that being the profit and loss company financial p and l profit and loss changing the first date here to january january to december there we have it Got our three tabs open on the left-hand side. We're going to go into the Home tab, left-hand side. We're looking at the flow with relation to the customers. Customers representing the sales cycle or the accounts receivable cycle. Revenue, hopefully cash, ultimately coming in to the company from customers for goods and services that have been provided. We're looking at the full accrual process for a type of business such as a bookkeeping or law firm or construction company or something like that where the bill happens we do the work first then we bill the client or the customer with an invoice so notice those two terms are used kind of interchangeably in practice we bill the customer but in quickbooks we actually invoice the customer and these two terms then you got to know which side of the table they represent within quickbooks the bills represent other vendors uh, billing us that we're going to pay money ultimately going out the invoice represents a form that is going to the customer for works that we provided and or uh, inventory that we provided and we expect them to receive payment in the future so the invoice means it's work we did for a customer and we did it on account and therefore accounts receivable is going to be going up if we did the work at the same point in time, like at a cash register, such as a restaurant, then you would have the sales receipt. And we'll talk about the sales receipt in a future presentation. So last time we talked about the creation of the invoice. We talked about how we would need items and so on to create the invoice. Now we're going to say what happens once we get paid from the invoice. And of course, the next step is the receive payment item. The receive payment can be quite confusing uh, in that it's a little bit different than what we would learn if you if you've learned accounting from a from a financial accounting standpoint with debits and credits because we're going to have to differentiate cash that has been deposited from cash that basically we have on hand and we want to make sure that we have set up our accounting system to do the to do so when you learn debits and credits you usually would just say I'm okay I'm going to increase cash because now we're receiving the money from the customer that we invoiced in the past and then we're going to reduce the accounts receivable the account representing that the customer owes us money but we also want to think okay should i put that cash directly into the checking account at this point or is it going to do i am i holding on to the cash am i going to group the cash in some way and then go to the bank later the reason that is important is because if for example you've got cash here on this step and you got cash from multiple different people then if you deposit it into the checking account at the point of time you received the cash it most likely will not match up to the amount that's going to be on the bank statement because when you actually deposit the cash you're going to have to walk over to the bank and physically walk over to the bank not just enter the data here but you're going to go to the bank and deposit the cash in one lump sum therefore the cash on the bank statement will be in one lump sum and if you recorded the cash at this point with multiple different payments then they're not going to match up and when we do your reconciliation to the bank which is a very important internal control it won't line up properly so the important point here on the collection side is however the collections are happening you want to make sure that you line it up in some way shape or form so that the, the deposits that you're going to put into quickbooks into the checking account are, are going to be the same format same grouping of the deposits as actually are physically going to go into the bank so that the bank's records will match your records so that you can reconcile as easily as possible so that'll be the, the general idea we got the invoices over here you got the receive the payment let's go into a receive payment form this is a form type we call it a form because it's a data input form 
However, it is a form that's less likely that we're going to be using to actually uh, print out and give to someone. It's more of an internal data input form for the most part, although we might want to use it as some or use some format as evidence that the that the payment has been made. But generally, we would think of this as like an internal data input form for the most part. You got your ribbon up top. Most of the times when you go into this form, you're going to go directly down to the data input down below and and click on who you're receiving the payment from and so on and so forth. But let's look at the ribbon real quick. Similar items, the new item, you can delete, you can print it, you can email it, you can put the attachments on it. You can look up a customer in this area in the formatting tab. We can preview it so you can preview the format, manage templates. So you still have the templates, although they might not be as applicable as the templates, of course, on the invoicing side, which are going to go to the customer for sure. Customize data layout. We got the reports information, the quick report, the transaction history, the transaction journal, this one being the one that might be useful for you to kind of kind of go back and forth and think about what the transaction and impact will be on the accounts. Remember, everything that we enter will typically have an impact on at least two financial accounts. Really good practice every time you do data input to think about what the impact on the financial statements will be. Process payment receipts. View open invoices. These are reports you can look up in the reports center. We'll do that later when we look at reports. Customer balance details, sales by item detail and uh, items price list. And then the payments add the credit card processing here. So I'm going to go back to the main item and then the format of the customer. Let's go back one so we can see one that has been done. So first you're going to be, we're going to be selecting who you're going to be receiving it from. When you select the person that you're going to be receiving from, then you'll have typically a list of open uh, invoices that are going to come out down below. So you've already entered the invoice. Now you're selecting a customer that has invoices outstanding. Typically, those will then show up down below. And if you select that item, typically the payment will then process up here. That's how much that's how much you're going to be receiving. If you're receiving something less than the full amount, for example, here you got the original amount, the amount due. You could then say, I'm going to collect something less than the amount due, which would mean there would still be an amount outstanding. Or you could put in the 440 here for the full amount, taking the balance down to zero. And then we've got the date is going to be here and the reference. And then we got the different types of payments we might have received, such as a cash payment, a check payment, credit card. Now note that these, these are kind of just more informational type of things for the most part. So a cash doesn't have any check number, but it does have a reference number. A check has a check number, which represents the number on the check that you're receiving if you received a check. And then you've got the credit card information here and then the e-check information, which is similar format, but you don't have a check number. You got the reference number once again, and then you can have, you can add if you so choose another payment method. So I'll go back to the cash item. What's this going to do when you enter it into the system? It, you know by depth. And then by default, usually the other side is going to go into what we call undeposited funds because we have not yet taken it to the bank. And in this case, we're talking about cash. So that would be appropriate. And then the next step would for us in QuickBooks would be to deposit it in the proper grouping in the same format as we made the deposit into the bank. And that gives us that interplay. And that's the new factor. That's the that's the difference that undeposited fund from financial accounting with debits and credits that most people learn that is an added step that can be a little bit confusing. Now, there could be times when you're saying, hey, I don't need the undeposit funds. You might be saying, I don't collect cash. I only get checks or something like electronic transfers and I get the full payment of the amount I received. Therefore, it's going to go into my account in the same as of the same amount as it's going to clear the checking account. So for me to take it in and out of undeposited funds adds an unnecessary added step to it. So you could then change it change the preferences because you don't you don't have a drop down to change anything at this point you could go into the preferences i'm not going to record this i'm closing this out i'm going to go to the edit drop down we're going to go down to the preferences so i'm in the payments on the left hand side and then i'm in the company preferences in the tab to the top this item right here is use undeposited funds as the default deposit if that's checked on you don't really have another option if you uncheck that, it's probably going to make me open everything back up again if I do this, but I'm going to uncheck it and say, OK. It's going to close all the open windows. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to have to open everything back up again. So I'm going to open up this tab. 
going to go to the company drop down and let's open the home page up again opening up the home page maximizing it and then if i go into my receive payment here once again and i'm going to go back to the prior form back to the prior form then we've got this drop down now so now you can choose undeposited funds or you can choose the checking account whatever method that you set up you'd like to you, if you want it going through undeposited funds you might want to fix that and so so no one can change that so that when you have other people doing the data input they don't they don't take it to the checking account or do or change the process so but if you want it all going to the checking account directly removing the final step which would be appropriate or could be appropriate in the event that that uh, you're you're getting like trans uh, electronic payments or something like that or checks for the full amount and you don't need to compile them in some different format and then put them into the bank then you might want to take it straight to the checking account also note that if you're dealing with credit cards it's another kind of issue with the credit cards in that the credit card company might group the deposits into the checking account in some format that uh, you want to you want to try to line up with so that once again your deposits in will match the deposits on the bank statement i'm going to go to that transaction details i'm going to the re reports up top and look at the transaction journal which is a good tool to see what will be the impact on the financials here's going to be the journal entry so we got the payment we've got the name we've got undeposit i'm going to make this a little bit larger undeposited funds is going up that's going to be an asset type of account kind of like cash but it'll be in other current assets and then the accounts receivable is going down so that's the journal entry that we would expect to see closing this back out let's let's take a look at it i'm going to close this one back out and then go to our reports opening up the window on the left hand side reports drop down let's open back up our two primary reports including the balance sheet report because they closed after i did that other thing reports drop down again company and financial profit and loss report p and l report date range let's make it from january on to december so now we're talking receiving a payment so let's go to the balance sheet on the left hand side if you see this undeposited funds account that's the one that represents funds that we have received but we haven't physically deposited to the bank yet so if there's anything in this account that would represent the fact that we're holding on to checks or we're holding on to cash that needs to then go into the bank account and note it's cash still so if we thought about it as how what what section should it fit in should it be other current assets or cash it should really be cash because it's it's a check or cash that we're hanging on to the reason they put it down here in the other current assets is because it doesn't function like a checking account there's not a separate ledger to it and the checking accounts up here typically are items that you can kind of connect to a financial institution possibly so the reason it's down here i believe for quickbooks purposes even though it's in essence a cash account is be is because of the functionality or how the account works not because it shouldn't really be classified basically as, as a cash account so in any case if you go into the undeposited funds drilling down on it you could see that we've got the the payments the payment represents that form if i double click on the payment form then we've got the customer payment so notice you got different names for this form which which can be a little bit confusing and you want to understand all of them so in if you go to the home page in other words it's called receive payment and then when you when you go into the transaction detail report it's called it's called simply payment and when you go into the receive payment form it's called customer payment so those are all basically the same form which is a little bit confusing because it's nice that they they label it because then you then you could see the types of transactions that are there but if you're talking about that particular form someone might call it you know receive payment they might call it a customer payment or they might just call it payment and you got to kind of be able to visualize this data input form and the transaction that will result from it if i close that back out so there's there's the payment item on it the other side of it is going to be in the accounts receivable closing this out back to the balance sheet we're going to go to the accounts receivable here double clicking on it and these are going down with the payment so the accounts receivable goes up with an invoice and then we get paid it goes down with the payment if you double click on the payment form then we're going to get back to that payment form closing this back out we also see the payment forms are going to impact the sub ledger 
for accounts receivable. So anytime something is impacting accounts receivable, you're also thinking about the subledger breaking out the accounts receivable by who customers owe us money. So we can go to the reports dropdown. We can go to the customers and receivables, and we can go to the customer balance. Let's go to the customer balance in detail. The end result of this adding up to the same total amount, if I go all the way down here at the 93.007, breaking out by customer now. And then, of course, we could see the payments here as well. So the payments are going to decrease on a by customer amount. So also just realize that if you go to the home page, there might be a couple different ways that you that you go to this receive payment. You might go to the home page. You might physically receive a payment, for example, go here and then choose the customer like we saw. Or you might choose some other method. For example, you might go to the customer center either through here. I typically go to the drop down customer center and then you might find the individual in this format by looking at the actual customer. You might look for customers, for example, that have open balances and then look for those invoices. There's the invoice that's open. You could double click on that, for example, opening up the invoice and then you can create the related the related payment and go to the receive payment here and then enter the receive payment so that it connects that way and it populates the invoice connecting it and that way you might you might see that that might be a, a system that you like because it connects to the actual invoice you look the invoice up first and then create the receive payment from that actual invoice closing that out not recording it closing this out you also might look at the open invoices by going to the transactions here looking at the invoices and saying okay i got this invoice let's look at for example the open invoices in the invoices section same kind of thing you could you could select the invoice and then say all right this is the one you know this is the one i got paid for example and then once again you can go to the receive payment which will create take that invoice and, and create the receive customer payment for it closing that out i'm going to say no going to open up the screen Going to go back to the home page. Also, just realize that when you're dealing with the create invoice and the receive payments, if you're going to use bank feeds in addition to that connecting to the bank, then the bank feeds are going to have to fit in here somewhere. It's not it's not as easy as basically saying, OK, I got a deposit. I'm just going to record it as an increase to the checking account. And the other side is going to then go to to revenue, for example, because here we have to enter something without getting cash. And then we're going to have to fit the bank feed in to, to the process when we get the payment or when it gets deposited in to the, to, the, to the bank. So we'll talk more about that when we get to the bank feeds. But just realize if you're doing the bank feeds and you, and you have the full accrual process and you're talking about the, the deposit side of things, you got to think about how the deposits are going to, going to fit in, help you with your reconciliation process or with the data input flow from the receivable cycle.